Good morning, boys and girls. Our shared reading for this week is titled Her Fearless Run, Catherine Switzer's Historic Boston Marathon by Kim Chafee. Pat, pat, pat. The summer sun beat down on 12-year-old Catherine. She held out her piece of chalk and marked the tree as she ran past again. Two laps to go. Catherine dripped with sweat. Her legs felt like noodles, but she kept running. One lap to go. Just a few more feet. A few steps. One mile. Catherine held her head high and tried to catch her breath, but... The mailman stared. The milkman asked if she was okay, because in 1959, it was strange to see a girl running. Girls weren't supposed to sweat. Girls weren't supposed to compete. They were too weak, too fragile for sports. That's what most people thought, but not Catherine. She thought running was magic. Pat, 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 pat. At 17, Catherine traded laps in her backyard for laps at the Lynchburg College track, where she was a student. Three miles. One rainy afternoon, Catherine noticed the men's running coach waiting for her along the track. Can you run a mile, he asked. I can run three, Catherine scoffed. Although there was no women's running team, Lynchburg was one of the few schools that allowed women to run in men's races. The team needed more runners, and Catherine was eager to join. Pat, 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 pat. Four laps around, three laps to go, two laps, one more. She finished her first competitive mile. One day, Catherine interviewed two teammates for the sports section of the school newspaper. They had just run the Boston Marathon, a race that was more than 26 miles long. Catherine's eyes shined. She had never heard of anyone running that far. Catherine began classes at Syracuse University later that fall. Like Lynchburg, there was no women's running team. Syracuse didn't allow women to compete in races, but the men's running coach invited Catherine to practice with them. Arnie Briggs, the volunteer team manager, beamed. I've been here 20 years and we've never had a girl before. Catherine felt welcome. Pat, 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 pat. At first, the others ran just ahead of Catherine and she struggled to keep up. Soon, there was no one in sight. So Arnie started running with her. Day after day, month after month, they ran side by side. Five miles, 10 miles, Arnie told lots of stories to pass the time. Most of them were about the Boston Marathon. He had run it 15 times. One winter's day, Catherine confessed to Arnie that she wanted to run it too. Women can't do that kind of distance, he replied. They can't run that long. But I run six or even 10 miles with you every night, Catherine shot back. Arnie always told her how good she was at running. How could he doubt her? Catherine knew that 10 miles was a long way from 26, but she believed she could run any distance if she trained for it, and she wanted to train for the Boston Marathon. If any woman can run a marathon, I believe you could, Arnie admitted, but even you would have to prove it to me. You're on, replied Catherine. Pat, 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 pat. Catherine ran through the bitter cold of January and February and March. 12 miles, 14 miles. Snow banks piled high, sidewalks disappeared. It was hard to run on the road safely. Her legs ached and blisters covered her feet. 16 miles, 18 miles. She cut triangle wedges out of her sneakers just to get them over her swollen toes. On her last training run, Catherine ran and ran and ran 
31 miles. That was almost five miles farther than the marathon Catherine was ready. But Catherine had a problem. For 70 years, only men had been allowed to wear an official race number while running the Boston Marathon. Would she be accepted as a woman? Should she run without signing up? Catherine checked the rule book. The section titled The Marathon said nothing about the distance being only for men. The entry form said nothing about it either. After all, women weren't supposed to sweat. Women weren't supposed to compete. They were too weak, too fragile to run that far. That's what most people still thought. But not Catherine. April 19, 1967, the day of the Boston Marathon, a record 741 runners registered for the race, including Catherine, KB, Switzer, the only woman with an official number. Come on, runners, let's move on it. Snow gathered on the race officials' hats as they tried to corral the runners. Catherine and Arnie jogged around to keep warm before shuffling into the starting area. The runners moved closer. The crowd fell silent. The gun went off. Bang! Away Catherine ran. Pat, 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 pat. The cheers from the crowd were exhilarating. Catherine smiled. Faster runners passed by, excited to see a woman in the race. They wished her well as they continued down the course. Catherine relaxed and found her running rhythm. Pat, 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 pat. Beep, beep. Runners, move to your right. A truck filled with newspaper photographers moved through the pack. A bus carrying race officials followed behind. Runner 261 stood out from the others. Was that a girl wearing a race number? The photographers wanted pictures. The race officials wanted her out. Suddenly, a man stood in the road blocking Catherine's way. He reached for a hand and grabbed her glove as she sidestepped past him. Who was that? Scrip, scrip. Catherine heard something behind her. It wasn't like the pat, pat, pat of sneakers. Scrip, scrip, scrip. Catherine turned to look. A different man, an angrier man, shouted, Give me those numbers! He swiped at the front of her shirt. Catherine struggled to break free. Arnie tried to push him away. Boom! Another runner barreled into the man and sent him flying off the course. Shaken but freed, Catherine ran as fast as her legs would carry her. Pat, 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 pat. For a moment, Catherine wondered if she should quit. She still had 24 miles to go. Suddenly, finishing wasn't just about her. If she quit now, no one would believe that a woman could run a marathon. People would still say women weren't supposed to sweat. Women weren't supposed to compete. They were too weak, too fragile. They shouldn't be allowed to run. No matter what, I have to finish this race, she told Arnie, on my hands and knees if I have to. So Catherine ran on. Pat, 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 pat. 12 miles, 14 miles, 16 miles, 18 miles. Catherine watched the women standing on the sidelines of the course. Some cheered, but many didn't. If only they knew how magical running was. If only they weren't afraid to try. They could be just like Catherine. They just didn't know it. Catherine rounded the final corner. Less than two blocks to go, just a few more feet, a few steps, 26.2 miles. Catherine held her head high and tried to catch her breath. Reporters surrounded her. What made you do it, they asked. Why Boston and why wear numbers? Catherine's answer was simple. I like to run. Women deserve to run too.